left side with 14 for the game. Drives to the top, in trouble, throws it to the right side, Walsh. 10 for the game, shot right wing, in and out, no. Tip up off of the backboard, no. Saved by Keeley. he's fouled. 6.2 seconds left. Ohio 62, Akron 61. Reggie Keeley will go to the foul line. Keeley with the knee bend. Shoots it up there, and he got it. It's a two-point lead. It's 63-61. Wants to make it a three-point lead for the Cats. Knee bend. Shoots. Got it. It pinballed around and came down. 64-61. 6.2 seconds left. They get it into Marshall. He'll hand it off to Abreu. They cross with four. Now with three, and Ohio did foul him. DJ Cooper did foul Abreu. He waits, he dips, he fires, he got it. 64-62, 3.1 seconds left. Abreu with one more. Will he hit it? Will he miss it? He will miss it off the back iron, but it rolled in! It's 64-63 with 1.9 seconds left. Cooper to the line, throws it out. Missed it, rebound digs, one second left, dribbles, fires, it won't count, it's over, it's over. The green and white is above the rest. It is Old Ohio's day. It's time to do the court street shuffle in the big dance. Ohio University basketball has a rich tradition, a tradition full of amazing moments and memorable players. Perhaps no memory stands out in the minds of Bobcat basketball fans more than the run to the Sweet 16 in 2012. After clinching the MAC tournament title with a win over rival Akron, the Cats knocked off Michigan, then South Florida, and then took North Carolina to the brink in overtime, a run that will be talked about in Athens for decades to come. No, not satisfied with it. You know, me and my teammates talk about it all the time, how we need to get back. After head coach John Gross departed for the University of Illinois, Ohio Athletic Director Jim Schall set about the task of finding the next head coach of Ohio basketball. Well, it was critical for us to continue the momentum and the success that we've had. And obviously, uh, John Gross and his staff did a tremendous job in helping us build to get the NCAA tournament twice and win games. So uh, our, our fan base had grown. So it was very important from my perspective to hire a seasoned coach. The perfect fit turned out to be Jim Christian, the head coach of TCU. No stranger to the Mac, Christian holds the league's all-time highest winning percentage from his days pacing the sidelines with the Kent State Golden Flashes. And once I got to know the people, you know, once I got to know athletic director Jim Schaus and, and, and Dr. McDavis, I mean, I just, the vision that they had for the university, uh, the role basketball played in that vision, you know, kind of exciting because I think that, you know, they're trying to, to do some things to make this a special place and, and have a special basketball program. When a new coach comes in, there's always some questions on how well they'll adjust to the new group of players. After a little time, it became evident that Ohio had the right man for the job and the Cats were ready to pick up right where they left off. Uh, he's intense, you know, he's focused, he has a goal, it's coming into practice and, and once we get it done, that's it, you know. You know he gives you a lot of freedom, you know, and uh, he's always honest with you. You know, he tells you the truth and, you know, he, he lets you know what, you need to be, what needs to be done. Um, I think he's a great coach, I think he's going to do great things for this program. I think he's going to do, do a great job for us. When Jim Christian took over the Bobcats, the cupboard wasn't exactly bare. Ohio returned every starter from their Sweet 16 run keeping one of the winningest units in Ohio basketball history intact. When the season tipped, the Cats picked up right where they left off. As usual, one of the major catalysts for Ohio's early season success was do-it-all senior point guard T.J. Cooper. Since stepping foot on campus as a freshman, the Chicago native has been instrumental in leading the Cats' fast-paced attack.
First and foremost, he's, he, he's been an unbelievably joy to coach, and, and I mean that sincerely. You know, he's a guy that really, every single day, uh, he sees things on the basketball floor, he's aware of things that happen in the game, and he does things that only special players do. He searches for assists, and, I, and, I, and literally, he searches for assists. And I never met a you know, point guard that searches for assists like, as well as he does. You just, as you get older, you know, you just, the game comes slower and you just get better, so. I feel like it's easier for five guys out there on the rhythm instead of, you know, just one guy. So I just try to make sure, you know, Walt, Red, Evo, and, you know, Nick, you know, just make sure they get going first and, you know, try to get myself going and, you know, just try to get the game into a good rhythm. He understands when guys need to get the ball, who might be struggling, and he goes out of his way to try to get them shots, you know, and that's a rarity. There's, you know, there's not going to be many guys that could have the impact that he's had you know, is, is the reason why our team's had success. You know what you're going to get out of DJ. He's going to find open guys. He's going to score when he, when he has a chance to score. He's going to push the ball when he's going to push the ball. And he's going to give you effort out there in the court. And that's what I love about the kid. The play he made in Marshall when he, when he put the ball behind his back and somebody else's back. Some of the baseline, those underhanded whip softball type passes he throws. That's a gift. I think that's just a feel for the game that is going to carry him for a long time. I feel like, honestly, it's just a God-given talent, you know, because it's nothing that you really can just, you know, work on or practice. And, you know, I just think, you know, just been playing ball for a long time, and I try to put my teammates in a, you know, better situation. He wants to be a great player. He takes every game, his approach to every game is is that of a great player. You know, he he, he holds himself to an unbelievably high standard. Like I said, I, I wouldn't trade him for any point guard in the country. Perhaps no game showcased Cooper's ability more than Ohio's January contest versus rival Marshall. Number five dished out a school record 17 assists as the Cats crushed the herd in a 37-point blowout. Ohio into the front court, Cooper to the foul line, look away, pass, ball to Moran Hammer, 34 to 12. Off of the inbound, John Smith reaches up and slams it down. Baseline left, Smith reached up and rocked that rim. Cooper wide open from here to Chi-Town and he banged down the three. 64 to 33. Keeley, top of the key for three, bang! <laughs> and everybody at the Convocation Center, unless they're wearing the Marshall shade of green, on their feet now with the standing O for DJ. We're gonna miss him. The Bobcats have made a habit over the past few years of finishing conference play on a hot streak. However, success in the early portion of the MAC schedule has sometimes been difficult to come by. For the Cats to achieve their goal of a regular season title, a hot start in January would be crucial. It is game on the back play in 2013. It's Ohio and the Buffalo Bulls. Down the floor, Cooper gives it to Baltic. Slammer jammer. Off it, decks it to the lane, goes to the rim. Banker, yes, as he's falling down. Dribbles over to the right side. Whips it into the post. Reds with a right hand duck. Oh, get out of here. What a beautiful pass. Game on between the Huskies and the Bobcats. Right to Cooper, Ohio streaks into the front court, three on two. Cutting to the rim, Walt off it, layup, yes! Count it, and a foul. All Ohio tonight. And the Cats will win this ball game by 18 points. Fake left elbow jumper on the way, banked up, no good. Cooper got the rebound, banking shot, yes! The winning streak is at six. Ohio is now 14 and five on the year and perfect in Mid-American Conference play at five and oh. Paint this one green and white. Key to Ohio's success in the early stages of MAC play was the development of senior forward Reggie Keeley. The six foot nine Cleveland native earned a spot in the starting rotation and hasn't looked back. From the day I got here, I understood how important he was to this basketball team. He's our physical presence around the rim. He's done a great job. He comes in, he works extra continuously. He's been a hungry senior. Uh, he's been a, again, he's he's an easy guy to coach. You know, over the years, it's just 
It's just been, you know, one big process. You know, you just work hard every day, and hopefully you get a chance. And right now I'm getting my opportunity, so uh, I felt like I've been very blessed, and I'm very fortunate to, you know, be in a situation I am now. You know, you're a smart player out there. You know, you know how to, you know, find the certain spots, and, you know, just with the chemistry, you know, he knows where I'm going to pass the ball, and he know how to get open. One thing you need in college basketball, you need a paint presence, and, I, and he's been a part of our team to do that. And I think, you know, that's going to pay dividends on us down the road as far as getting to the free throw line, um, getting paint points, and we need that from him. Riding a six-game winning streak and holding a 5-0 record in the MAC, the Cats found themselves heading to Northeast Ohio to battle Jim Christian's former team, the Kent State Golden Flashes. It was a lot more difficult than I thought. You know, coming into it that week, obviously I'm preparing for the game, and, 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 and I have a lot of respect for Kent and their team and what they're doing. Um, you know, and, and actually in the walkthrough that day, really wasn't, uh, that much of a big deal, but then at the game, you know, and I saw some people that I haven't seen in a while, it became a little bit emotional at that point, but again, as always, when the ball, when the ball goes up, those things go out the window, and it was a great basketball game. It was a really uh, a 40-minute grind for both basketball teams. Looks and he gets it in to Smith, right back to Coop, pocket left, couldn't fire, trucks it in the lane, off balance, layup, yes, counted and a foul. Off the cut, off the inbound, Kellogg, corner right three, bang! And Ohio back on top, 27-26. The first half featured a tough physical game, with neither team able to pull away and secure a convincing lead. Circles with two and one, fires up a three and he got it. The second half was exactly the same. At the top it's Baltic, point left it's off it. Wraparound entry to Keeley, up against contact and he banked it in. We're tied at 36, between the leg dribble to the foul line for the Cats. Teardrop from the back logo, splash. Ohio on top, 50 to 46, DJ's getting locked in. And left it's Cooper, tries to get it to Keeley, can't pull up three on the way, bang! Seven to shoot into the paint, corner right, it's a three, it is good for Kent State. Crossover dribble on Baltic, lean in shot with a bank, got it, count it, and a foul. Off it wards off defenders, and Cooper comes into the front court, whip it to the post, Keeley, right hand layup on the right hand side. Cats down one, 66-65 with the ball, two minutes to go for the game. Cooper right of the paint, on a bounce to Keeley, who slipped to the rack and he laid it in. Brewer on a switch, behind a screen, it's Brewer at the top with six, now with five, straight on with four, works on Cooper, low block right, banking shot, yes, with one on the shot clock. Under a minute to go. Cooper at the top, splits two, runs to the goal, pumping off balance shot, no good, but he went down to the floor, he's fouled, he'll go to the line. 56 seconds left. DJ to the line, and he got the first free throw. We're tied again. Five of six from the line. The lefty fires, got it. Brewer left wing, they get it to Evans, head of the key, 24 to shoot. Lowers his shoulder, and he traveled. He ran against Offit, and Offit didn't move. He traveled, a huge turnover. Now they show a double, 10 to shoot. Offit, wing right, back to the left side, Kellogg. Six to shoot, Cooper at the top with five. Now with four, fall back, three on the way, partially blocked, saved by Evans. Now six, Penn State in the backcourt. Holds at the timeline, to the foul line, right hand flyer, back iron, no good. Rebound batted down to the floor, Ohio wins, Ohio wins, Ohio wins, 69-68 over the Kent State Golden Flashes. It, it, I know how difficult it is to win there, and I know how uh, how many teams have gone in there and, and lost those type of games. So to walk out with a win, you know, like the way we won it was, was real exciting. They knew it was a big night, you know, a hard night for me, but a big night, and not only a big night for our team, but for me, and, and to see them, you know, feel great about it, that meant a lot to me. That's a big time road win right there, man. Riding a seven game winning streak and off to the best conference start in nearly 40 years, Ohio took their 6-0 MAC record back to Northeast Ohio to battle the MAC's other unbeaten, the Akron Zips. With the two teams meeting in the MAC championship game two out of the past three years, the Akron-Ohio rivalry has quickly become one of the most anticipated matchups of the year. You always want to play a, a, a team like Akron, a, a team like, you know, a team that you really want to play. You know, I wish you could be like that all the time. It's no secret that they're in the championship almost every year. Two good teams, you know, like to compete. And, uh, you know, they, you know, good players on both teams and, you know, nobody want to lose, you know, so, you know, kind of, you know, creates his own type of rivalry. 
Well, I think you know both teams understand and have respect for one another. First, I think that you you know you keep an eye on what's going on in the league, but you know you know what teams are playing really well, and and uh, when you play somebody in the MAC title, both teams have the majority of those pieces back. You know it's going to be heated because somebody spoils somebody's dream. So uh, we knew that coming in, and, and it's going to and it's going to be that way for a while. Those are great things. A sellout crowd filled James A. Rhodes Arena on a snowy February night to catch this battle of Mac East powers. All right, battle on between the top two teams of the Mac. It's Ohio and Akron from the Rubber City. High on the left, Kellogg tees up a three. Bang! For Nick Kellogg. Put the ball down the floor, baseline, all right. Back up to the top. Kretzer had a back tap it. Stolen by Hall. Loops it back of the D. It's Cooper, and he laid it in with the left hand on the left hand side. Ohio exploded out of the gate, cruising to an early 11 point lead. But the zip slowly began to claw their way back, ultimately overtaking the Cats and pulling away. Pass left side, it's Marshall. Tries to run to the goal, fallback jumper is good. They'll take pleasure in doing that. And all Akron will have to do is get across the timeline. They have beaten the Bobcats. I mean, we were up 11, you know. No, no team should ever come back, you know, especially when you got four seniors out there on the court. And, uh, you know, I put that game on me, you know, just because I'm the senior guard out there. And, uh, you know, we'll be ready for them when they come here on the 27th. Our team learned a lot from that. You could see it, you know, in the expression on their face. But at the end of the day, all it did was motivate us more. After a tough loss, especially to a rival, it can be difficult for a team to regain their swagger, something Ohio has to do to keep pace with Akron in the hunt for a championship. When you're halfway through the conference season, every night you go out, there's a championship game. That's the message I've been trying to preach to them is when you're in the hunt for the title, Ball State's just as big as Akron. Um, and, and on the road is tough. You know, I'm not a big believer in like the terms hangover game or look past this game. They mean nothing to me. They, they, those only are terms for people who aren't recklessly pursuing that championship. Those are excuses. Up next, another road trip. The fourth in the row for the Cats to Muncie, Indiana to take on the Cardinals of Ball State. Ohio put any thoughts of a hangover to bet immediately. Ball State has lost every conference contest at home. They're 0-3. Travis Wilkins checks into the ballgame, gets it to Walt off it. Left wing three, book it. And Ohio's on top, 13-3 on Ball State. Now to left wing. Cooper stepped in there, stole it away. Runs on the right wing. Waits for Baltic. Now steps back at the foul line. Now to off it. Left point three. Book it. Now to Hall at the top. He started tonight. He's going to shoot from three and bang it down. TJ Hall gets in the starting lineup. And he has 10 points. Goes low block right underneath the goal. Kick out to Hall. No look. Pass into the post. John Smith laid it in. Oh, the ball movement was so delicious on that possession for Ohio. Up to the top. Off it. Tipped the ball away. Runs to the goal for a right hand layup. Timeout. Ball State. Biggest lead of the ball game right here. 40 for Ohio. 14 for Ball State. Working left wing. Kellogg. Corner left three. Booked it. And this ball game could be done with nine minutes to go. And the Bobcats are now 16 and 6 on the season. The Cats rally after the loss from Akron on Saturday to win tonight in unbelievably convincing fashion. We came out ready to play. We, we talked about it for two days. You know, the leadership of our team is, is 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 in a great spot because they're competing for a title in their last go around, and they won it. So, um, as a coach, it makes it a little bit easier to motivate them. With an impressive 4-1 road record in conference play, Ohio finally returned home to Athens to face the Bowling Green Falcons. While the Cats have earned their impressive start on the road, there is no place like home.
it's amazing to me because it's second to none. I think our the marketing people at our university have done an unbelievable job of getting students to the game here. Kind of, there's probably not 10 better student sections in the country than are at the combo. And you can ask any coach in the league. It's the envy of every every program in the league. The turnout, the community involvement, the support that we get. And there's a reason why our team plays unbelievably well at home. Because it's a, it's a very difficult environment when it gets going. When the ozone gets into the game, it, it's, it's, it gets me revved up. In front of a crowd of over 10,000, the Cats cruised past the Falcons on the way to an 8-1 and one conference record. The best start in league play in nearly three decades. Cooper to the foul line. Pitch it high on the right, off it wide open for three. Bang! Back to Taylor, sideline right. He'll wheel into the color. Now Wilkins, point left three. Bang! For Travis Wilkins, off it on the angle left side. High on the right, Cooper from 25. Bang! Draws a double team, goes baseline right into the post. Keeley up against two. High banker, yes. Live. It's Holmes, and he's had the ball stowed away. Paul runs left of the paint without numbers to the rim, and he laid it in. Ohio is now 17 and 6 on the year. Final score Bobcats 72, Bowling Green 63. With seven conference games remaining before the MAC tournament, Ohio is in prime position to recklessly pursue their regular season championship. Over the next five weeks, we'll give you an all-access pass to everything. Practices, travel, games, and life on and off the court for the Bobcats. This is Attack You.